Welcome to DTLT today, Martha. In the house and bringing no, the crowd. In I know the chat this room. is like this is probably the most people we've had in the chat in a while. Yeah, well, that's the kind of uh, audience that you demand. We're gonna have. And to I like this that time. we're just getting the riffraff, like people we don't even know. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the riffraff. So welcome, <laughs> welcome riffraff to the show. Uh, we wanted to talk about CanvasCon, which both you and I attended yes, last we did. week. So CanvasCon was... A, Let's start with Canvas. Yeah, Canvas. <laughs> <laughs> what is Canvas? Because no one knows, really, because everyone uses Blackboard. But Canvas is a new, fairly new LMS. How old are they? Um, they launched sort of in 2008 as a business, but okay. I don't. the product's only been on the market really for the last 12 to 18 months. Yeah. And Mary so, Washington just adopted them uh, this, this summer. Basically, they did a pilot in the summer and then a you know full rollout in the fall. Is that right? That's well, yeah. They did a small pilot this summer, and um, and then a full rollout in the fall. And one of the things that we did, which is um, not how a lot of schools approach this, is we did not do side by side with our old LMS to kind just. of ease people in. We just sort of went whole hog. Yeah. And um, pulled the switch on the old CMS, which was Blackboard, mm -hmm. and went with this new one. Um, from Instructure, and we found out, I guess, a couple of weeks ago that they were having their first regional conference, and they were doing it here in D.C., so a group of us went up there for that last Thursday. Yeah, they had a national conference uh, in Arizona, in, in Structure August, yeah. back in August, but yeah. they decided they wanted to start doing these regional ones, and um, since we were probably one of their larger um, and earliest major rollouts yeah. for a university, um, what I got from the people that were at CanvasCon was that over half of them, I think, weren't actually using Canvas right. currently, but they were interested, interested in, in it. Uh, and then a good majority of the others are smaller community colleges that are using it. So, um, oh, oh, it was in, in Utah. Utah. Right. So, uh, which is where the company right, is based. Which right. is where Instructure is based. Which so, makes um, sense. Um, so that was nice to see that many other, and DC is makes perfect sense for a conference like that because there are so many kind of schools within spitting distance. Um, well, what ended up being funny is so. that I don't I don't know if their main headquarters is there, but Blackboard has an office in DC. That's their, their main, yeah, their main That's office. That's their main office yeah, there, is. and they actually invited some folks from Blackboard to come, and two of them did. Showed up at the conference, uh, and they they had a lot of good fun with it. You know, they were very... actually it was incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> well, they didn't. Se fun. They didn't seem to pull any shots. Uh, no, no, know. they were. That's and, what I kind of like about them. They're and neither very... did the presenters. Really, yeah. I, I I can imagine if I was presenting a conference and I knew Blackboard was in the room. You know, I, I don't know. I'd be, you might feel a little uncomfortable. A little, a little bit, but yeah. you know, we, they had people in there comparing Blackboard to the rich old uncle that you kind of like for the handouts that he gives, but at the end of the day, you don't really want to hang out with his daughter because she's kind of lame. <laughs> you want, <laughs> and he went on to build this whole metaphor. And Canvas is like the hot new girl. The young, the yeah. young spunky girl that uh, is really cool to hang out with, and she's got her own little quirks, but she's a lot of fun, yeah. and you like it. So <laughs> it, it was interesting. And the Blackboard people took it in stride. They did. Yeah. Um, I guess they gave can in the instructor people a uh, tour of their headquarters the next day. I think they I were talking about that on Twitter. That. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. And then well, what about the sessions? What did you make of uh, what you heard? And well, the the keynote was by Phil Hill, who's... Uh, I missed that. So. Yeah, and, and he was very good. He's with Delta Initiative, so a consulting group, and he covers a lot of just the main LMS market in general. And that was what a lot of his keynote was, was here's the state of the market right now, which was helpful. It wasn't Canvas Canvas. Canvas, Canvas. The rest of the day was more, you know, focused on their product. But this keynote was more of this. What this is what's happening in the LMS market right now, uh, which you know, there's a lot of renewed interest. I have one slide which I thought was really interesting, talking about how the market share has changed uh, in a timeline. And to there's an amazing trend here. I tweeted this out, but here's the graph that he showed. And if you notice at the bottom that squid-like structure. <laughs> That is actually Blackboard consuming all of these other companies. You can see them sort of being sucked in. Exactly. Like every, a big black every time hole. a company started to get large enough to be a competitor, Blackboard just sucked them right in and bought them out. Yeah. Uh, and so, and then up top there, you have sort of the open market, which is Sakai and Moodle up yeah. until this point. Yeah. You know, as the main players in the open source. Uh, LMS market. And on that note, I think um, for us at Mary Washington, one of the things that be ultimately really helped us make the decision to go with Canvas was that right in the middle of our process, 
um, literally like days after they came and presented here, they went open source. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the sessions I was in, Brian Whitmer was talking about kind of the history of the company and why they had made that choice. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really kind of an interesting insight into the choice that they made. And I guess he and the other co-founder, Devin Daly had Devlin Daly had wanted to do that right from the get go. Yeah. Um, but everybody who was advising them from a business perspective was saying, no, 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 don't do that. And then what happened was they learned, they realized once they started going and trying to sell it to, uh, to schools, that one of the school's biggest concerns was that they were going to get swallowed by Blackboard. Sure. So at that point, they were able to go back to the business advisors and say, actually, this makes really good business sense for us mm -hmm. to go open source because it's what we need to do to kind of assuage the fears right. well, of and it's, and our it's still, uh, potential clients. It's still a valid business model Absolutely, for them yeah. because even you know Moodle and these other ones, yeah. you there's a cost in terms of support. There's a cost in terms of hosting. There's all those costs involved. Yeah. So in structures going that route, you know, they've got an open source product that, you know, if, if you're up for it, you could install it on your own server, yeah. run it completely off of that. But they do the hosted service, and that's what Mary Washington is doing. And I think that's what a lot of schools will go towards. Well, and the other advantage of the open source model is that they are building out a fairly robust open API, right. which they're putting up documentation just in the last week or so that, that the documentation has really um, expanded on that. And the hooks, there are a number of more hooks than there were before, and Devlin was showing them to me, and it's really very... Um, intuitive yeah. so i think from a development perspective that's really great news for schools Devel like us development and in terms of just minor bug fixes yeah. if we were to notice something going wrong and canvas wasn't going to release an update immediately let's say they went you know the way of blackboard where it's like oh they're not responding for six months yeah. or something we could issue our own update to yeah. it I mean, we could we could test it out we could run it and it would work fine yeah. so you know i mean that's although it's a nice model yeah although another piece of that too that um that we've already seen with working with instructor is because of the kind of um, the the kind of application they are because it is this cloud based mm -hmm. application they don't think of their product as being released on versions. Okay, you're just a Canvas customer, and they're constantly sort of improving and rolling out across. Um, their cloud of customers. Um, yeah, I was surprised by that. I think they said every yeah. two weeks they release some sort yeah. of update of all the different things that they've been working on. Uh, and just, you know, whether it just be minor bug fixes or something like that. And, and really, um, one feature which our faculty and a number of faculty at other institutions have been clamoring for, which was the ability to not release grades on an assignment until you're done grading all of them. Right. Um, you know, we're halfway through the semester, and sure enough, that's now a feature, and we were able to email our faculty and say, this is how you do it. And, yeah. you know, with Blackboard, um, in the past, you, you're you talking about a major upgrade before oh, you were yeah. seeing any kind of significant feature. Yeah, I mean, I can um, remember from Longwood, it's like you would start testing six to eight months yeah. in advance, saying, okay, we're going to yeah. Blackboard 8, and all the faculty already hated you because you had right. a new number at the end of Blackboard, and it meant they were going to have to change everything about yeah. their courses. They weren't going to like it. Things were going to change. Um, and this seems a lot shorter, incremental, right. you know, and very responsive to improvement. sort of the community. And um, there's actually a, a place on their support site where you can kind of vote up mm -hmm. features. Um, so they're really trying to pay attention to what um, their user base is requesting. And I don't know, for it feels nice to be working with a company like that. So just from that perspective, I think it was it was good to go in here. And then what about in terms of what you were hearing people doing in Canvas, you well, know, from a teaching and learning perspective? I went, to, I went to one session where Howard Community College talked about sort of their uh, media-rich courses. This guy was very big into, you know, putting web video in there and things like that. One thing that I hadn't realized that's really ingrained into the product, and it's something that I think is really compelling, is that, uh, not only is it easy enough to just paste a YouTube link and it shows up in the discussion post just like that or Vimeo or whatever have you, uh, but you can also push a button. It'll open up your webcam. You can record a video as a discussion post or as a comment to someone else's post and then hit post and it just embeds the video right in there. So there, I saw a lot of models where... Um, they were framing a course in terms of uh, one was a speaking intensive type uh, public speaking mm -hmm. course. And so a lot of what they were doing was actually presenting in front of their webcam at, as practice. Mm -hmm. And students would have to respond with video in kind you know, on the discussion post. Right. So it was a lot of very media rich environment in that. And it made it really simple. I mean, they demoed it right there. And what's nice about that 
is that for their iOS app, which I'll get to a little bit later, I went to a session on their mobile apps, but on the iPad, the the instructor could actually leave video comments directly from the iPad which is really, on the yeah. on the assignments and work. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I went to an, another session from an instructor in Howard Community College who was teaching a class that was sort of an introduction to the internet class. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and she was also using the integrated video as a way to foster kind of community and discussion. And she had an interesting um, result, which is that she taught one class fully online and one class um, in person. And the face-to-face -face students actually made better use and greater use of um, of the web video yeah. um, tool. So that was kind of an interesting, was interesting kind of observation. Jim mentioned in the chat he wondered if uh, the webcam feature was going through YouTube or another service. As far as I could tell, it was built directly into the product. It so. is, yeah. They actually use Kaltura. Do they? Okay. Yeah, they integrate with Kaltura. That's my understanding. Okay. Yeah, and Kaltura um, was something that I had looked at in yeah. WordPress for video comments. I've got a mm -hmm. blog post out there somewhere where I had started playing with a plugin that they have that does something very similar, where you hit a button, it recognizes your webcam, you can record and post a video automatically. Yeah. So, you know, I guess with Canvas, and I think we're just going to see hosted. more and more migration towards that sort of ease of media production within those mm -hmm. environments, which. You know, just the fact now that you see more and more spaces where you have that kind of flash activated yeah. access to your webcam and suddenly you're not just, you know, being able to write content but create media content. Well, and one, I think that's a really neat development. And one tool that I wasn't aware of actually that someone mentioned was something called, I believe it's called Zentation, um, which is actually a way for you to record a video while you're doing a slideshow uh -huh. and it syncs them up. So you can actually end up with a web video nice. that is your PowerPoint slides or wow. your keynote slides yeah. and your video and you can sync them up to work together. Yeah. So uh, that was what they oh, were I using I saw the woman who did the presentation um, from Howard that I saw, she showed this add-on and I haven't had a chance to look into it, but it's a little piece of software that you install that will speed up the video that you're watching. Mm. without making it sound chipmunky. Really? Yeah, I have no idea how it works. Yeah. But her, the reason was because this is a really big class she teaches, and uh -huh. she was concerned with like that much video content. Right. How was she going to get through all of it? Uh -huh. So she actually had this thing activated, and she showed us, and it just sped it up enough so that it wasn't like, you just, I don't know. It was right. just, it just made it a little bit speedier. How 30 minute presentation, you get it through 10 or 15. Yeah. yeah. It's a compression yeah. feature, yeah. Mr. Rush says. And who knew? Andy knows how to do all those yeah. tricks. Yeah. yeah. Andy is not a big fan of the Kaltura. Um, well, and, and, I think I, and I should correct the chat. They're talking about you would need to have Kaltura in order to do this. You don't. That's the point of yeah. Canvas being yeah. in the cloud. That's right. Yeah. They have paid for Kaltura on their servers, and it works through that. So and we don't. And Jim, to, yeah, Jim, to answer your question. Uh, that's part of our install with Canvas. Right. We have that feature now in Canvas. Yeah. They've negotiated that with Kaltura. We don't, we don't get involved yeah. in that. That's and and I don't know how that plays in terms of their open source product and right. what their open source yeah. users yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't say. Um, it was a really cool feature and yeah. in something that you could really see uh, a media-rich environment yeah. uh, blossoming out of that, which is cool to me. Another session that I went into was on their iOS apps. So uh -huh. they've already got one, which is their iPad application, which was geared towards professors, that, and it was mainly a grading application called SpeedGrader. Uh, SpeedGrader is a part of their grading system in the LMS where you could just quickly look up against a rubric, and um, or, or, or not, you don't yeah. have to use a rubric, but go down from each student and assign grades to it. And so that was the first application they said, you know, the one thing that I think uh, professors are going to be using a lot is their iPad to do grading and to quickly check in on what their class is doing. So they could look at the discussion posts, they could look at their grades, and they could make comments to those. I mentioned they could do the video comments and stuff directly on there as well. Uh, but they actually also showed off their next iOS app, which is going to be called Canvas, which is geared towards students. Um, I guess professors could use it as well, but it was more geared towards being able to keep track of all the courses that you're in the discussions that you're having in them, your yeah. activity stream. Students could see what grades they had gotten on an assignment there. So a more fully featured application that would be universal yeah. for iPhone and iPad. And they were talking about eventually expanding that to where you really could do content creation directly in the app right. back to the course. So whether it's you know text content or uploading files or um, creating video yeah, they, using the camera on the uh, 
iPad. Yeah, I think a big challenge for them is going to be, you know, the idea of a file system on the iOS devices. So how do you create a document on the iPad and get it in to Canvas yeah. is going to be difficult. That's yeah. what they're trying to figure out now. Uh, they're also looking at a mobile web app and an Android application yep. for 2012. It's on the road. They now. really had a very nice like roadmap for that. Like yeah. they had obviously kind of thought about all the different um, aspects of this. Well, they've got 60 people working yeah. for them now. So I mean, they're just continuing to grow. Yeah. So. And and Jim just mentioned a new hire of theirs, which is uh, Jared Stein. Right. Which is very cool to yeah. hear that he's there. And I heard an interesting anecdote when I was speaking with Devlin Daly at the conference that apparently Jim saw him at Open Ed uh -huh. last week and um, was begging for the, one of their new T-shirts, not one of the ones they gave away uh -huh. last week, but I guess there's <clears> one that has like the Death Star on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the TIE fighter, like, zooming away, and Jim was begging for a T-shirt they'd run out, so Jared's supposed to get one for Jim, and I told Devlin that if you have gotten Jim Groom to beg...